Hello everybody, Presented here, back in my program, and today I'm going to do the Marauder, and I will get one thing out. I didn't make a video over the weekend just because um, I was over at a friend's house, he came in from college and he wanted to hang out, and so I hung out over the weekend, so that's why there hasn't been a video out for a few days. And uh, while I was there, I did make one spell just because I wanted to show him how it was done. I didn't record myself doing it, and so I did uh, the Deep Wounds ability. And so um, this one was, was, wasn't really too bad. I did have to make a new uh, status effect. Um, ah, what's the word I was looking for? It, I don't know. But anyway, yeah, yeah, the uh, Shatter status effect. The, um, where it converts damage to divine damage. I had to make a new status effect for that because um, all my status effects, they only dealt with like one change at a time. And in the shatter status, oh my god, that was my cat. <laughs> and in the shatter status effect, it had to do two things. It had to, one, uh, convert damage to divine damage. Or basically, when you dealt attack damage, for instance, and you want to convert it to divine damage, you have to do two things. You have to, one, deal divine damage equal to the same damage you're going to deal from what the attack damage would have dealt, and two, you have to reduce that attack damage to zero so that you only deal divine damage. So that's basically what I had to do with um, the shatter status effect for that one, and it works just fine. I already checked it. Let's see if this is here already. Yeah, here we go. Okay. So let me go up a little bit. So we did do the cast right here, and it's funny because um, it immediately deals divine damage, because like, as you can see, it, it would have dealt attack damage, but it converted to divine damage. So yes. And then it does the same thing here, where it would have dealt spell damage because, um, because it only shatters if they're bleeding, and so the bleed for here is right here where it would have dealt spell damage, but it converted to divine damage. So yeah, it's working all right. So now um, I figured basically since that I did this spell already, I will see how long Sunder takes to program. And if it doesn't take too long, which I don't think it should, then I'll probably just go ahead and do these two passives and then just get all these out of the way, just so my next video is on track with doing the three infinite spells. And, and so also I don't just make a short video with just one ability. So anyways, I'm going to pull this over here and we're going to make a new active spell, not in the mages. They are a rogue and the marauder. There we go. Okay. So this one's called Sunder. It extends active spell. Then that and that. All right, we're ready to go. Super. The spell type is this is um a damaging spell because that's all it deals. It doesn't it doesn't do any sort of debuff. So we're going to go into active spell. It's a debuff. Initial damage type is attack. Initial damage molt is one. Stat to spend is current mana. Display stat is mana. Base cost is twenty. Base cost multiplier is zero. The cooldown is two turns. Upgrade one is plus 25% initial damage. Upgrade description two is plus 15% damage per debuff. Target type is gonna target enemies. So yes, all right. So now I'm going to have to call the update description because the description is going to change depending on which upgrade you get for uh, damage, like the damage multiplier equals deals initial damage mult times 100. I'm going to round it just so that it doesn't get any um, float errors plus percent attack damage increasing by and I do need one more ability because or not ability I need one more variable for the um, damage per debuff variable or I'll just do debuff molt and at first it's oh my god what happened there 
is 0.1 increasing by thought round this debuff molt times a hundred percent increasing by 10% damage per debuff the target is afflicted oh my gosh bye so yeah that should be fine okay then I can get the upgrades out of the way first just because those are really easy we're gonna do upgrade spell this dot initial damage molt is going to increase by 25 percent I'm going to upgrade the spell again debuff molt is going to increase by 15 percent so those are out of the way now now we're going to override cast spell and for this I think I'm gonna have to like not do um, call the super because in the super it automatically well I okay there's two ways I can go about this and I think I've done this before where I can deal the damage initially with the super cast spell and then I can deal an additional stat change event damage with so I'll pull this up just to show you because I can deal the init initial damage and then I can deal another instance of damage by 10% of this damage multiplied by how many debuff the target has or I can calculate the damage that's going to be dealt and then multiply that damage by 10% per debuff and deal one instance of damage either way it'll get the job done um, and really, I don't, I, th mm, I might just do call the super because the super is going to deal with everything, including the mana cost and the, the cooldown itself. So I might just do, um, like a variable called damage del. It's an integer and it equals whatever the damage is going to be dealt from calling the super cast spell function and then what I can do is go into the targets stats go into their listeners array because what I can show you is a debuff is basically going it's every debuff is going to be part of the parent status effect listener class and in these status effect listeners, each one does have a status effect that is currently applied to the target. If I go into status effect, every status effect has a variable called is positive. And if is positive is false, then that means it's a debuff. So basically I can iterate through the target's listener array and see which ones are parent status effect listeners. And then from there, I can see which ones are not positive and from there I can deal extra damage based on how many of those listeners that the, that the target has. So what we're going to do is var current listener equals target stats listeners at the current index. Now we're basically going to check if the current listener is a oh not a preloader. I think I made that mistake before parent status effect listener and now from here if current listener dot status effect because that will call the status effect variable and then from there we're in the status effect and there I can call the is positive if current listener um, I actually got to make one more variable called var damage molt it's going to be a number and it's going to be set to zero at the start so if the current listener status effect is positive, but I want to do the negative so that if it's not positive, damage molt, we're going to increase it by 10%. And so from there, oh, actually, no, 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 because the um, debuff molt can change from a 
this upgrade right here. So I will have to call this dot debuff mult instead of a flat number. So then from here, I'm basically gonna do like if damage mult is not equal to zero, meaning if any, or I'll do greater than zero just because more consistent with the programming that I made. So the only way this will not be equal to zero is if the target has any sort of debuff on them. And I only want to deal extra damage if they have a debuff. Because the thing is, if I don't add this if statement, it'll always send out a stat change event, but I'm gonna do it to where it's basically the damage dealt times the damage molt. And if it's zero, it's not gonna do any damage, but it can also get manipulated by the target's um, listeners, other listeners, like maybe they reduce damage or maybe they change how damage works. Um, and I just wanna make sure that only if the damage molt is not zero or greater than zero, will it send out that stat change event. So right here, we're just gonna do stat change event, and it is a current health attack. Target entity is the target of the spell. The source is the owner of this spell. It's by a change of damage molt. No, I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. Well, I could do the damage molt first, but I'll do the damage dealt first. Times the damage molt. Rounds is gonna be true and everything else is fine. And so actually, I can just put this right here, just to condense it down a little bit. And I think that's done, actually. <laughs> yeah, everything seems fine. So that wasn't too hard to make. Now I can just go into my active spell class and set the variable. Marauder Sunder. Okay, let's run the program, just make sure everything's gonna be okay when it launches. No, something happened. Oh, okay, yeah, sorry, <laughs> I have to return. So we're gonna return, Oop, actually, hold on. We're gonna return how much damage we dealt. I'll put a space there just to make it a little more easy to read and it seems yep okay so that was fine so now we're going to go to the active spell oh something happened oh geez okay I think we're good <laughs> okay we're gonna unlock it give it to the player Sunder we're going to upgrade I'm gonna upgrade it again. Now from here, I'm actually just going to cast the spell onto the ally one. And it should only do 125% damage and nothing else. But what I'm gonna do after is I'm gonna put some debuffs on the ally and we're gonna see the extra damage that it's going to deal. So here, deals 40 to 43, and when he cast it, it dealt 53 damage, so it's looking just fine on the damage that it dealt. And it didn't send out another stat change event because since the ally one had no debuffs, the damage mode was zero, and so it's not sending out a new stat change event for bonus damage. So I think that's pretty good. What I can do here is I can go into the entity ally one, call his stats, go into the listeners array. Listeners! There we go, that looks a lot better. Then we're going to make just a couple status effects. Um, yeah, I can just, just do like this. Parent, status effect, listener, status effect. Let's do a health poison. Uh, entity, ally one. The player applied target will be well uh, the health poison affects whoever has it so it doesn't really matter so I'm gonna do target um let's do like just five percent of his health just so it doesn't do a lot of damage duration for three turns on source do true rounds is true and then so that's one and I can add another one so I'll just do um another one but we're just gonna do a mana poison. Oh, shit. 
Man of poison. There we go. And then I think I just need one more parentheses and I'll be good. Yep. So now the ally one has two status effects on him. So the damage should be increased or another damage change should go through for 20% of the original damage. So from here... Oh no, I'm sorry, it's um 25% because I have the upgrade right here, 15% damage per debuff and 10% damage per debuff, um, so that's 25%. So yes, so there's two debuffs, so it's actually increased by, or deals another damage change by 50% of the original damage. So it gets this, and it dealt 80 damage, and then another one went through for 40, so this works just fine. So yeah, if we do something that like um, a health regen, this one's not going to count because health regen is a positive status effect. So it's only going to do 10 or 25% now. Yeah, looks just fine because um, 43 times 0.25 is 10.75, which got rounded down in this case to 11. So yeah. All right, so that's looking pretty good, and that didn't take too long, so I'll go ahead and do the passives now. What's the next one that I'm doing? Pilfer. Attacks have a 20% chance to steal 20 gold. That seems... Yeah, 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 yeah. That should um be okay, and then it should be 20. But I'm not sure about this one because... In this one, yeah, I don't think I can do this one, which sucks, because adding this upgrade would make it to where you get more gold the more gold you have. But since uh, this is going to be a change listener, and the change listener's change is set when the change listener is created, I can't actively update um, the change that it's going to do unless I make an exception for this passive alone, which I don't feel like I should do, unfortunately. I might just do the, like the kind of cop out and just do like, you know, you get plus uh, 30 gold, you know? Plus 30 gold, so then you get 50 gold per, per change, or per um, attack. That seems fine, honestly. I might do a, a change later where I might just make an exception for that alone, but as of right now, I'm kind of, I'm okay with that. So let's go into here, do a new passive. This one is Pilfer. It extends passive spell. Oh, there we go. Okay, so then we're gonna call the super. Update 1 is plus 30 gold. Upgrade 2 is plus 15% steel chance. So then, I'm going to call the override update description. Do I call... I don't. Do I call it here? I'm just seeing if I call up, 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 update description in the constructor. I don't think I do because, um, why don't I actually, I don't know. There's just probably a reason. I call it an infinite spell. Why don't I call it anywhere else? I should, I should do that. I'm not going to do it here, but, um, before I do my next video, I'm going to call update description in the constructor of my spells. Honestly, I should just put it here. Oh, I already do. I'm an idiot then, I don't need to do this. You go away. So then in all my abilities, I don't need to call update description from my constructors. Ah, okay. Now I need to go through and get rid of all those because I do have a bunch of abilities where I call update description from the constructor of the individual skills. So I shouldn't do that. I should get rid of all those. So this dot description equals attacks have a so we're going to do a private whoa 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 why are you up there oh because I accidentally messed it up 
our steel chant. It's going to be unsigned integer equal to 20. Oh, wait. Yeah, yeah. Have a steel chant percent chant to steel. I'm going to do gold steel unsigned integer equal to 20. This not gold steel plus gold. There we go. So we're going to override unlock. We want to make a steel listener. It's going to be a change listener. So I'm going to make a private function called apply listener. So now what we're going to do is change listener dot remove. Oops, no, 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 not apply listener, steal listener. There we go. From the owner of the ability, then this dot steal listener. No, not steal chance, you dang old dongers. Equals new change listener. So stat listener, we're listening for a current health attack. Change type is going to be, what is it gonna do? Gain, this is gold gain. Applied target will be the source, because it's when the source of the listener deals the change. Stat to change is gonna be gold. I do have, since gold is not an entity stat, in my stat change event class, over here, oh, wrong one, double click that, there we go. In my stat, stat change event class, I do have an exception. Where is it? Yeah, here we go. I do have an exception for gold. So I can do a stat change event for a gold stat, even though gold isn't a stat on the entity's dictionary. So yes. So base stat is gonna be gold. Multiplier is going to be zero because we're doing a flat change instead of a multiplier change. Or I guess that could be a way. So instead of um, stealing a flat amount of gold, I could do it to where um, you just get like 10% gold or something like that. Eh? That sound all right? I think that sounds all right. Uh, I'll do that actually. Just because I'm, I'm a big fan of percentages, just because percentages scale, they scale well. And 20 gold can, 20 gold can either be really good or really bad, depending on what stage you are in the game. And if you're in the early game, 20 gold might be pretty damn good. But if you're in the late game, you basically shouldn't get this, because in the late game, 20 gold means next to nothing. So does 50 gold, too, even if you get the upgrade. But this, this will require you to spend, I think, four attribute points, because passes will cost three attribute points and upgrades will cost one. So just to get 50 gold every five hits will cost four attribute points. So I'm probably gonna do um, just like steel gold equal, oh God, equal to 10% of your current gold. There we go. I can do like plus 10% gold gain. Yeah, I see that, oh, not gains, it's a Entirely different thing. That's about it's about like working out, which I do not do because I spend my time on my computer all day. So anyway, gold malt equal to ten. Okay, so now ooh, actually hold on. Let's see this real quick. This change is greater than zero. This change is equal to math round. This change times. Oh, okay, and I also do need to add a little bit of a, an exception, else this change is equal to math.round, this change, oh, rather, 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 not, not this change, because, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, no, I'm sorry. This this is only for um, it only uses the multiplier if uh, 
if you're if you're gaining gold. It doesn't do the multiplier if you lose gold. So that makes sense. If this dot change, uh, I think it's null. Because in this case, um, it's gonna be the the multiplier that we set and not the this dot gold mold. Yes, is positive is very very true. On source is true. Is pre doesn't matter, but I'll do true. And then chance would be this dot steal chance. Chance linked is false. Everything else is good. Okay. So here, basically, if you don't set the change, because here. Right here, the change is going to be null. So I can check and see if the change is null. Because normally, a gold change is a flat amount and not by a multiplier, which is why I didn't have an exception for a multiplier. But here, I'm going to add the um, instances in which you'll use a multiplier. So it's going to check if the change is null. Then this dot change equals math dot round. Uh, this, no, 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 no mean gold times uh, this that multi what where's the multiplier multiplier oh you know what I'm an idiot <laughs> I'm an absolute idiot hold on don't 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 listen to yourself sometimes you're dumb because in the change listener change listener sets the change for the event I mean yeah right here change so it's gonna be by oh, okay. I'm gonna see if that works. This seems like it'll be okay because the statute stat change event didn't have a multiplier variable because it only has a change variable. You dummy, you dummy, and it, it should do the change properly here in the run function of the change listener. I'll check and make sure. Anyways, okay. Let's 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 move swiftly on. Get this out of the way because I don't want this video to run on for too long. We're going to push the steel listener in the owner's stats. So we're going to unlock, and then from here, we're going to miss apply listener. Oh geez, and then we're going to override upgrade spell one. And in the first spell, I do need to change this. Plus, da, 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 da. what is it, 10% gold game. Gold gain, and then here attacks steal gold mold is going to be zero point one. Here we go. This is looking better. To steal gold equal, I did it again. Equal to of your current gold. There we go. That, okay, that's good. Okay, so in the upgrade spell one, we're going to increase the gold molt by 1%. 10%, sorry. And in the second one, we're going to increase the steel chance by 15%. I do need to call the apply listener inside all these upgrade spells, upgrade spell functions. There we go, okay, let's run it, make sure everything's okay. All right, all right, looking good. Going to pass the spell. Nope, Marauder, Pilfer. Nope, not a colon, the semicolon. File utils, what is this? Doesn't tell me, okay. Accidentally imported that instead of pilfer, so let's get rid of that. Run it, make sure everything's okay. Come on. There we go, okay, it's just fine. So we're going to do passive dot pilfer. We're gonna unlock, give it to the player. Oh, I hit um control enter on accident. Okay, passive spell, pill, oh jeez, come on, pilfer, upgrade spell one, they're going to upgrade spell two, okay, we're going to run it and it should be okay, let's figure, let's find out, see if it's doing alright, 
Changing gold by not a number. So, okay, that's already not working. <laughs> okay, let's find out what's happening. Var change. Oh, I see. I need to make an exception for gold. <laughs> All right, let's do that. This dot base dot equals equals gold. And I will make, okay, if this dot change is equal to equal to null, change equals main dot gold times main dot gold, no, not multiplier times this dot multiplier. Yes. Ah, uh, no, I need to make one more thing. Ah, uh, geez, all these nested if statements. If uh, change, no, 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 this dot mult is greater than zero. Basically, if you're multiplying it by a, by a positive amount, use the gold multiplier. Oh gosh, there's a loud noise. Number gold. No, 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 no. You messed it up. There we go. Change equals main dot gold times this dot multiply. Or I guess, no, you know what? You know what? I can, it'll still only use two lines. I could have just made it to where it did this initially no matter what. And then if the multiplier is greater than zero, just multiply it by the main gold multiplier. But both of them will take two lines of code. So I don't think it really matters. So if this change is equal to equal to null, Else, and then I basically do the same thing. If this dot change is greater than zero, change, we're going to multiply it by the gold multiplier, and that's it. So here it's checking for a gold change, and then what it's going to do is going to set, or rather, it's going to check if. If the flat change is null, meaning if you didn't set the change, then if the multiplier is a positive number, then we're going to make the change equal to the the goal that you have times the gold multiplier times the multiplier of the listener. Else, that basically means the, mul the multiplier is less than zero or equal to zero. In either case, it doesn't matter. So if it's either of those cases, then it's only going to make the change equal to the the gold times this dot multiplier because I don't want the gold multiplier to apply on negative changes. That basically saying like if if someone's gonna steal ten gold from you and you have like a ten percent gold increase on the gold multiplier, it'll also steal more gold when you lose it. So it'll instead of stealing ten gold, that person will steal eleven gold from you which I don't think sh should be how it works. The gold multiplier should only work on positive changes. So that's why I have um, this here. And then if the change is not equal to null, meaning if it's a flat change with the gold, then, um, yeah, 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 yeah. yes, 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 this is fine. Yeah, because it checks it down here. So I was about to say, Da, 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 da. Yes. Okay. This is this is fine. This is fine. Actually, um, I can take that out because it's gonna override it here, and then if, if this, oh geez, uh, put it in here, put it in here. Sorry, I'm being a little flustered, but I'm there's I have like a lot of things running through my mind. Like I'm reading my code. And like my mind is on one thing and then I look at something else. I'm like, oh wait, I have to do this and then I have to do this. And then I'm not like verbally saying what I'm doing very well, but I, I will hope to explain it in a little bit. Let me, um, so if the change is not equal to null, then change the change of the listener is equal to the change or like the change of the run function is equal to the change of the listener. And now down here, I'm gonna do like if this dot, I guess stat to change equal equal to gold and if um, 
change is greater than zero, meaning if it's going to be a positive change, then change times equal main.gold multiplier. There we go, because what I was doing was I had the else statement down here, and the problem is if I did, if I multiplied the change by a factor of the gold multiplier, it would have just gotten overridden here. Because in this case up here, this else statement basically means, in this if statement is saying this thought change is equal to null. Else can only mean if this change is not equal to null. And if I set the change here in this else statement, that means that change is not equal to null. And so the, the if statement down here is also going to pass because the change won't equal null and it'll just override the change right here. And so that's why I moved the code to right here. Okay, hopefully that's gonna fix it. Okay, it didn't crash, so that's that's the best thing I can ask for. Now where's gold? Okay, changing gold by zero. That um seems fair because you start with zero gold. Let's go ahead and change how much gold you start with. Gold, let's do 10. 10 golds. Okay. Change your gold by zero. Gold before change is zero. So something happens that sets the gold to zero, even though I set the gold to 10 right here. Um, I don't want to find out, because I referenced the gold a lot. I just want to see where I set the gold to zero so that I can override that. So let's move this up. In the main, yes, 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 it's right here. So let's set that 10 again. Come back my results. And then in potion effect, don't need that. Stat check room reward, don't need that. Gambling room, let's just do equals. Main menu, this is probably, yeah, because you enter the main menu as the first frame. So I just set the gold there and this should be fine. Da, 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 da. Where is it? Changing gold by zero. Excuse me? Okay. I don't know if I'm going to be able to even get to the next passive just because this is taking so long. If this changes, you go to null. Let's go ahead and trace not change. Meaning change is equal to null. I want to see that just so I can know that it's running through these if statements perfectly fine. Yeah, not change. Okay, so it is getting to this if statement. So it will go into the gold, which is 10, times the gold multiplier, which is 1, times this multiplier, which is... Point one, correct? Yes. And so if that's the case, then is it overriding the change somewhere else? Is not equal, which is true. Um, okay, let's trace the change here just to make sure it's doing the multi multiplicate multi. I can't even say the word multiplication. That sounds wrong, I don't know why, but <laughs> anyways, let's just move on. I just wanna do the, see the change here. Oh yeah, hold on, I gotta do something. Gotta add this now so that I can add the trace. There we go. Or rather, just put it back, put the, put the trace there. <laughs> so we're gonna trace the change here just to make sure it's doing this, func this function properly. And then if it's doing it properly, it'll show us here. And then I put it down here just to make sure nothing in between is all is messing with it. So it's zero at first. So that means that this that this isn't doing its job. So what I have to do now is have to trace the gold, trace the main gold multiplier just to make sure when it multiplies everything that it doesn't equal that none of them equals zero. Otherwise, that'll set the entire thing to zero. So which one's zero? Tell me. The third one. Really? 
I find that hard to believe. Because I said it to this dot gold multiplier, you little, you little dinguses. Trace. Hold on. Oh my god. I have to see where it's setting the multiplier to zero because it's, it's giving it a number of 0 0.1. Where is it? Oh yeah, it's on the application. Zero? What? Oh, because it's a fucking, I didn't change the, oh my god. I didn't change the variable type. Oh my god, that would have made so much, oh, I feel so stupid. I didn't see it when I changed the, uh, the integer to a multiplier. I didn't change the type to a number. So whenever I gave it a decimal and it was an integer, it was just chopping off the decimal. Oh my god. I hate it. Okay, the thing is, I hate it and I love it when those kinds of mistakes happen because I hate it because it's so simple. I should have seen it and I didn't. I love it because it tells me that something isn't wrong with my main code. It's just I was a stupid idiot and I didn't change the variable type. So this should be fine now, hopefully. Come on, where's the gold? Give me some gold. Yes. It's working just fine. So yes, it was, what's the thing? It's 20% is 20% of 14, three or very close to it. 2.8, yeah, so it um rounded up to three, which yeah, that's good. Awesome. That was more trouble than it should have been. Um, I gotta go back to the main menu because I gotta change the gold back to zero. So the main menu is in um, frames, menu frames, main menu, there it is. You get set to zero. Do I have time to do the next passive? Attacks reduce the target's healing take when 25% for three turns. This one, okay, I'm going to do this one just because it's really, really easy. And I promise you, I'll just run through it because I know this video is on for far too long. But I promise you this passive is not going to take long in the slightest. So, let's go back. Duelist, 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 Duelist. Not Duelist, uh, Marauder. This one is infectious. Okay, this extends. I'll do this very quickly, I promise. <laughs> Passive spell. Alec, that's me. Okay, we're good. Uh, it's called the super, plus 25% healing taken reduction and then plus two turn duration and then it calls update description within the constructor of the super then from here we can do like this dot description equal to I do need a multiplier up here for the healing taken reduction healing molt be a number is equal to Two five attacks reduce the targets healing taken by by math dot oh, no no at the plus math dot round this healing molt times a hundred percent for oh need need one more private var duration. Unsigned int is equal to three. This duration plus turns. Uh, lowercase. Yes. Okay, so then we're gonna override unlock. What's in the super? What does the super do? Nothing. Okay, we're good. So then here we're going to need a A listener, which is going to be a status effect listener. No, is it just effect listener? There we go, effect listener. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna need actually before I do that, I need an override. Not an override, override. It's um apply listener. Actually, um. Hold on. 
Oh, you know what? When it runs, yes, it does it automatically for me. Okay, I don't need to worry about removing the listener then. I'm thinking right now, actually, hold on. Uh, because, do I have a remove listener in this? Oh, I do. Oh, I do. I didn't even realize. Okay, let's do that then. Remove. Actually, I do need to do one. Wait, do I though? I don't think I do, actually. Because I was like, do I need to remove the healing reduction listener from inside this effect listener before I remove the effect listener? I'm like, I don't think I do because you're not going to be upgrading your spells inside of combat because you won't be able to. So I think I don't need to remove the status effect listener within the effect listener itself. So I think I'm good. Listener, healing listener from the owner. This dot healing listener equals new effect listener. We're listening for a current health attack. Ah, geez, I bunged it up. Status effect, get rid of the import that I screwed up. Okay. So go into status effect, because you're going to be applying, is it health hemorrhage? Hold on. <laughs> I have to go into, oh geez, I have to go into status effect real quick, see which reduces healing. Healing taken, healing taken. If they take, I don't know what this is. It reduces the target's healing taken. So it's going to apply. Yeah. I think I need to make a new one. Hold on, actually. Oh no, it's taking longer than I thought. I thought I had a status effect that already did this. Health reduce. Okay. <laughs> okay, status effect. Health reduce. Do I already have? Okay, drain blood. Health for max health. No, I don't. Okay. Um. He oh, jeez. Healing redu reduced. Uh, healing taken. Change type is a spell. Stat to change. Oh, Jesus. Because, oh Jesus, this is taking longer than I thought. Oh no, hold on, let's go into here. Base stat equals value. Change equals event dot change. Uh, can I just put... Because... Missing mana, attack damage, or spell damage. Because the problem is, I don't know how to make it to where it only listens for healing in the stat to change. Let me see. Damage by spells. Um. Ah, this is taking so much longer. Because healing taken... It doesn't actually change a stat on the target. It, it, it should add a listener to the target. Actually, hold on. Go into here, because <laughs> it's gonna it's gonna put up a um, parent status effect listener. Missing health. Else, I think I need to add. Oh, do I need to add an exception? Oh no. Is convert. Is it convert listener? Else. Oh, you know what? I think I'm going to have to end the video right here because this is taking way too long. I need to make an exception for um, healing amplification because normally I wouldn't have it in a status effect. I would have it in a change listener because the change listener can deal with that very, very easily. All I do is I'm listening for current health buff, but in the status effect listeners, I can only give it status effects, and the status effects should have enough that it's um, to tell it what to do. 
But the problem is, instead of a stat to change, I need to add an exception for like um, like healing taken or healing dealt. And then in the listeners here, I need to add an exception for that. So that's gonna take way too long. If it was any other status effect, like any status effect, it would have been just fine because I would just have to call this status effect and then from here, I'll just have to do the apply listener and then call that within the unlock and upgrades, but this is taking too long and I apologize for ending the video, this like cutting it short from here because I'm in the middle of doing a spell. In the next video, I'll, uh, well actually before the next video, I'll I'll make sure that this is ready to go so that I can chain, or not change, so that I can finish Infectious really, really quickly so that I can move on to the infinite spells. So I apologize that this video was cut short and I apologize that this video, even though it was cut short, still took a million fucking years for me to record. And if you guys enjoyed the video despite the uh, length of it, then please show your appreciation by clicking the like button, commenting, subscribing, all that beautiful garbage that I love it when you do, and I'll see you guys next time.